Richard Van Wyhe with EV for You Custom Conversions. And in this segment, we're going to discuss brushes. And so we had kind of an interesting uh, event happen with these brushes on this uh, vehicle right here. So we'll take a close-up look and discuss a little bit about brushes and changing brushes and brush maintenance. So stay with us. All right. As seen on previous videos, this is our 1974 VW Carmagia. And this has the Impulse 9 motor in it. And we have a uh, blower motor on this to help cool this motor. And so we have to remove the, the blower and the shroud here in order to inspect our, our brushes. And so that's what we're doing now. A moment ago I disconnected the shroud on the bottom side and now I'm disconnecting the cables to the motor here just on the commutator side so we can remove the, uh, the band here. When uh, first converted we checked these brushes once a month and then we skipped a month. And the month that we skipped then, uh, so after two months we checked these, we noticed that uh, we had quite a bit of wear on four of the brushes, where four of them had what I would call normal wear and looked fine. And we had four that had abnormal wear, excessive wear, and it was funny that it was four and four out of the eight brushes, four had identical wear and the other four had identical wear, and it was such that the inner brushes wore less than the outer brushes, the ones closer to the end of the motor here. And so we'll give you a close-up shot of that and uh, share with you uh, what we uh, learned from NetGain Motors when we asked them about this. So let's let's get a close-up view. All right, now we'll try to get a a close-up of the brushes and allow you to see what we're talking about. So you can see here that this brush is about flush with the holder. Whereas this brush is about a quarter of an inch above. Okay, and this is just one set here. Try to get as good a view as possible on these. So anyway, as you can see, we had a difference in wear. And inspecting the commutator, it looks fine. Why would those on the outer end of the commutator wear far more than those on the inner portion of the commutator? So anyway, we uh, emailed NetGain Motors and asked them if they had anything to offer. And so I'll share that with you now. All right. So upon discovering the, uh, the difference in wear on the brushes, I wrote to uh, George Honstra with uh, NetGain Motors. And he, uh, let's see, that was on uh, the 24th of October. And on the 25th, I had a response. So can't complain about that. And then again, he, he offered some further information on the 26th. 
But I asked him what the possibilities were that would cause that kind of wear and so forth. And he, uh, he wrote me back and said that he was uh, forwarding my email to, uh, to Helwig uh, Carbon, the manufacturers of the brushes. And then he also said he would send me another set of brushes at no charge, but a different grade, a different hardness. And he believed by the, the age of the motor and so forth that they were H49s. And uh, he was going to send me some H60s, which are much harder. And so, uh, you know, we appreciate the, the quick response. And, and, uh, but his comments were that uh, the new brushes, the H60s, uh, would take a long time to seat, possibly 3,000 plus miles. Uh, they may squeak while in process of seating and putting down a new platina and that's normal and we've experienced that before with other motors uh, with the harder brushes um, and anyway the, he says the long seat time is indicative of long brush life so anyway um, and then he said that the uh, H49 grade is more susceptible to selective brush wear at lower power settings than the H60s and so Anyway, he, uh, he, he said uh, that the, in a later email that the selective brush wear is not uncommon and, uh, and said that the part number of the brush should be on the side of the brush but not the grade. So we don't have any way of really knowing what grade we're going to pull out of the motor. Um, but we'll show you that process in just a moment. So anyway, um, he thought the four and four was exactly what uh, he, he thought should occur. Seemed unusual to me. I've never seen it before. Matter of fact, we've never had a problem with any of the brushes wearing. Uh, but these are a, a, a newer brush that they had sent on on this uh, particular motor. We also got uh, the. Uh, the 60s on uh, some Warp 9 motors. So anyway, at a glance, these new brushes, this is a part number 106-21117-674-3-01H60. And they're for 9-inch diameter motors as well as the uh, Warp 11 HD, the high voltage. And uh, as he said, they have the part number, uh, but no, uh, no hardness rating on there. These are a split brush, the red top. And what's different than others that we've uh, received in the past is that these have an insulating cover over the uh, the wiring on the brush here. Instead of just being uh, bare wire, these actually have a clear uh, insulating uh, cover. And so we will replace the existing brushes with this new set. Uh, we were excited when we originally got this this motor. It was uh, uh, one of the first ones we received with the new style uh, split brushes uh, and the red top which is a superior brush it probably won't show up on camera but this is, is actually two pieces and you can see I can separate it slightly here and and then this is a uh, some type of rubber that connects them at the top and that's what the spring will ride on. And so it kind of acts as a dampener so that the um, brushes have less bounce and um, supposed to have much less arcing and be a superior brush 
uh, from the old style ones that they were using previously. So let's, uh, let's remove the old brushes and, uh, and install the new ones. Okay, now we'll remove the uh, existing brushes and I'm just moving the wires out of the way here a little bit to get to the uh, little bolt that holds these in place. And these are different than what's going to be going back in that they have a slot in them instead of a hole. So See if that shows up. This is slotted. Makes them easy to slide in and out. So anyway, use a little tool here. See that? You can use lots of different things to do that, but we use this tool to hold that out of the way. It just pulls the, the spring out of the way and we can pull the brush out take a look at it and there's no name apparent on these so no information on the part number or anything there and now the side that I had all the wear and it does have a part number on it and let me look. I think that's the same part number as what we're going to put in. But again, like I said, it doesn't have the uh, hardness rating on there. Let me grab one of the brushes. And... Yeah, different part number. All right. Notice that I wasn't getting a good view on these. Here's the brushes again. Maybe it'll show up on camera this time. These are the brushes that came out. These are the original brushes with this motor. This was on the... Uh, more inboard side, this is on the outboard side. And there's a uh, probably uh, oh, 5 sixteenths to 3 eighths of an inch uh, wear between those two. And these things are running, you know, a sixteenth of an inch from one another side by side on that commutator. And, uh, you know, kind of puzzling to me, uh, there'd be that much wear between them. And yet, all of the outboard ones wore exactly the same, and all the inboard ones wore exactly the same, and the commutator looks the same. And we put these together and line up the, uh, the mating surface here, the surface that's running on the commutator, and they look identical. I mean, there's the wear pattern, everything's is identical. I, I eyeballed down it and everything. It is just dead on the same. And so, I don't, you know, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, unless these are of different hardness. And uh, I mentioned that uh, to George and he didn't comment on that. But here's the difference between the new one and the old one. And, and you know, there's uh, an eighth of an inch on the inboard ones. And on the outboard ones, there's uh, probably half an inch, maybe nine sixteenths. So, very interesting. So we'll replace the brushes with these new H60, the harder brush, and see how it wears. We'll go back to our monthly inspection routine 
And if there's any abnormalities, we'll, we'll share that with you. So, um, pretty straightforward putting these back in. We just use our little homemade tool that uh, we use for hooking onto the, uh, the spring. And just lift the spring up, slide the brush in, drop it back down. That easy. So, anyway, there's eight of them to do. And we'll not bore you with the uh, showing you changing eight of these. But um, if you do have any questions regarding anything we do in any of our videos, feel free to write us at info at evnow.com. And we'll be happy to, you know, explain in more detail or answer any questions you might have. Okay. Here's uh, one of the new brushes installed. And just show you quickly how it's done. We just slip our little tool in here. Raise up the brush, or the spring I mean and insert the brush and you gotta make sure that the taper is in the right direction on the commutator. Lower it down, remove the tool, and there it is. Then it's just a matter of attaching the the um, wiring. And so it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy to change brushes, not a big deal. And so we just kind of bend them down then make sure they're not going to touch anything. So it doesn't take very long to change a set of brushes. It goes very quickly. So we'll talk just a little bit here about calculations. I, uh, I like spreadsheets and we've talked about this one in the past. This is a spreadsheet that we use for calculating uh, the cost per mile uh, uh, of vehicles and we do a comparison between the um, uh, electric and a gasoline or internal combustion vehicle and so by changing the uh, variables like uh, the miles driven a day uh, we've got 40 here say we uh, we change that to 50 miles a day and the miles per gallon uh, is 25 and we do that and it well, we can change the cost per gallon uh, say it's 386 and and so then everything changes and it shows us what the cost of gas is uh, per day um, and what the cost of electric would be the difference uh, the cost per mile and then it runs it out uh, you know per year um, three years, five years, seven years, ten years. And these are kind of handy to, to play with and, and take a look at. But what we also have is one that uh, we use all the time and it's an EV range calculator. And so let me uh, let me get a little better uh, focused in on this and we'll explain it. Alright, we have two different ones that, that uh, that we're going to show you now. And one is designed to give you the range that you can expect with a given vehicle and battery pack. And so the variables that we will want to know is the weight of the car. In this example, 2,200 pounds the ampere hour size of your battery cells and your pack voltage. And based on that information we will calculate the energy per mile in watt hours and a maximum safe range. And the reason we title that maximum safe range that is based on only an 80 percent depth of discharge. We never want to um, discharge our, our lithium cells beyond that point. 
uh, for that matter, any other cells uh, that you may want to use. That's typically the, the bottom threshold. So, just run a couple scenarios here. Let's say, uh, um, with this example, we'd have 53 miles. And that's basically what the Carmen Ghia is that um, you've seen in previous videos. It's 2,200 pounds, just slightly less. We're running 100 amp hour cells. It's 146 volts nominal. And so 53 miles. And we know from actual experience that that's dead on. Uh, we can get 60 miles out of it, uh, maybe 63, you know, uh, if we're running really conservative on the freeway. Um, but I feel safe telling somebody that that's the maximum safe range. And so let's, uh, let's say we don't change the number of cells, but we just change the size of cells. We go to a 130 ampere hour cell. So the voltage isn't going to change. And the weight of the vehicle uh, is only going to change slightly. And so now uh, we'd be looking at a 69 mile range. So another common battery size we use are the uh, the 180s and so let's see what happens with the 180s and because the 180s are a little heavier let's pump this up uh, um, let's, let's let's go 150 pounds so let's take out the, the 2350 and you can see at that point we're up to an 89 mile range and so what else might we do to increase that range? Well, we can add some cells. Um, and so let's, uh, let's say that we take this up to 170 volts. And uh, that's going to add more weight. Let's take this up to 2,500 pounds. There you have it. We're at 98 miles. And so if you wanted a vehicle with that kind of range, bang. We now know that um, that's what's going to work for us. But let's look at, uh, let's look at something a little different here that, that um, has a few more uh, variables and a few more answers. And that's on the, uh, the other page here. Okay, that last uh, spreadsheet we just looked at, we call the range calculator. And on this one, we call it the pack size calculator. And on this one, the variables are the vehicle weight, the range desired, and the cell size. So in this example, we have a vehicle, 2,200 pounds, again, using the Carmen Ghia's uh, real-world example. So we have 2,200 pounds, and uh, it calculates, again, our, our energy uh, per mile. The range desired is 100 miles, and the cell size, 180 amp-hours, and it is showing us that um, in, in that scenario, the uh, number of cells required is the 44 that we're running before. It calculates the pack weight for us, so we know that we're adding 560 pounds. And so uh, the original pack weight um, with the 100 amp hour cells were 312 pounds. So we're adding another 250 pounds. So we can go up here and change this to 2450 to uh, show our additional. Uh, vehicle weight. 
And so it also then calculates the battery pack weight, but it's also uh, calculating the, uh, the battery cost. Um, what we have found, though, is uh, uh, because this is um, designed to use the range and the, and the cell sizes, the variables, as, as the weight goes up, the uh, uh, range stays the same because that's something we've inputted. It shows the number of cells went up, and so the price went up so forth. Uh, let me show you that again. We'll, we'll drop this weight back down to the 2200. And you notice our pack size requirement decreased. So the number of cells, of course, was the variable that decreased in that because we've stipulated that. That's not um, a variable that uh, we're allowing to be calculated. That's one we're specifying. And so the cost went down and so forth. So let's say that uh, the vehicle weight's not going to change much, uh, um, you know, except for you know the battery size. But we'll leave that at uh, an average. And so um, with the 180 amp hour cells, that's 560 pounds at the the 100 amp hour ones it's uh, well at the 100 miles or <laughs> the number of cells that changed uh, requires more cells so you can see um, that this allows you to to play around and see what's going to work for you so if you want a hundred mile range the the options are going to be um, you're going to use a lot of 100 amp hour cells, 80 of them, and you're going to be uh, at 600 pounds of battery weight versus the 180s with only 44 cells and only a 40 pound difference in weight. Actually, they're going to be lighter. Here's, here's the, the other variable. Look at the price at just over 11,000. We go with 100 amp hour cells. Bang. A lot more cells, not quite double, but the price really didn't change much at all. So, 20 some odd dollars. So it's interesting what we can do with this. Uh, let's get to uh, a 60 mile range, which is what most of our commuter packages offer. And so uh, we're at uh, only 27 cells uh, to get there. Um, But let's um, let's change that to the smaller cell now, and so in order order to go sixty miles, twenty two hundred pound car, hundred amp hour cells, forty eight of them. And we're at a 158 volt pack. And so we can play with this. Um, we don't want to go uh, that, that high a voltage. So we can say, well, let's, uh, let's go to a little bigger battery. Notice we were at 6600. Going to the 130 amp per hour cell. We're able to drop our pack voltage down to 122 volts, and our price dropped down, and so forth. And so you can play with, it. and we could change this to where different variables can be can be adjusted. Uh, 
where we can, you know, vary the pack voltage and so forth. So a couple tools that we use to answer questions for customers that, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, that we have to deal with and, and we, we need to answer questions for us is we get an approximate vehicle weight. They tell us their desired range and what cell size they uh, want to use based on the uh, room they have in the vehicle and so forth and we can kind of crunch this out and we can run it in, in, in several different ways with different battery sizes and, and and give them something to think about. So that's just another service that we offer and this is something you can develop yourself. So just wanted to share that with you. allows you to run different scenarios very quickly and easily and uh, helps you in the decision making process when you're designing your conversion. So, for the EV Answer Man, I'm Richard and I thank you for watching and if you have any questions you would like answered please email us at info at ev See you next week.